New Astronomers, Michael here, and thank you for tuning into my channel. And in this episode, I'll be unboxing, assembling, and installing the SV Bonnie SV106 15mm guide scope. And I'll also throw in my first impressions of it. I bought this guide scope because my telescope, the Explorer Scientific ED102, did not come with its own finder scope. So it was very difficult for me to align it and just overall setting it up out in the field. But instead of buying a finder scope, I decided to buy a guide scope just in case I decide to do some astrophotography in the future. So if you're wondering if you could use a guide scope as a finder scope, the answer is yes. Just make sure that the product you're buying is a multi-purpose guide scope just like this one. All you need to do is install an eyepiece at this end and it should function just like a regular finder scope. And if you're new to my channel, I create product reviews, first impressions, instructional videos, and blogging in general about astronomy. So if you'd like to follow along, please hit that subscribe button. So without further delay, let's get going on this one. The box it came in looked like your typical generic unbranded product. And inside the box, the parts appeared to be packaged properly and separately with lots of shock absorbing material. It came with a dovetail mounting bar measuring 1.18 inches wide and 3.5 inches long, which had five threaded through sockets for attachment options. It also came with metal guide scope rings, which will be attached to the dovetail mounting bar. There were six metal thumb screws with nylon tips in total for aligning the guide scope with the telescope. The guide scope itself was 604 grams in weight and 240 millimeters in total length. It appeared to be made of aluminum alloy with a matte black finish. It had a 50 millimeter aperture with a focal length of 190 millimeters and a focal ratio of f4. The lens is a doublet objective design consisting of a positive and negative lens which in theory is supposed to reduce light loss and preserve light transmission. It also used a lens film to extend the life of the lens and to maintain true image colors. It featured a two-stage focusing range. First, there's a rough focusing draw tube which you loosen by unsetting the set screw and extending or retracting it by up to 30 millimeters. Then there's the helical focuser with an eight millimeter range for more precise focusing accuracy by up to 0.1 millimeters. This is a multi-use guide scope, meaning it can be used to capture astronomical photos and it can be used with a straight through finder scope if you install a one and a quarter inch eyepiece. To assemble the guide scope, I threaded the two bolts from the bottom of the dovetail bar through to the two dovetail ring threaded holes. I kept them loose until the guide scope was inside the rings. Next, I loosened all six of the metal thumb screws to create an opening for the guide scope. Then I slid it over the guide scope and tightened the thumb screws as evenly as possible. After assembling the guide scope, I realized that my telescope had the wrong finder scope base, so I had to buy one. The one I bought is an Explorer Scientific Hybrid Finder Scope base. It had mounting holes that matched the old base so I could reuse the same screws for the original base. Once installed, I mounted the guide scope to its new home. My first impressions are that while this seems to be a generic guide scope that has sold under different brand names, it doesn't appear to be cheaply made. This appears to be a good quality product with excellent fit and finish. The rough focusing tube is long enough to reach focus without the need of an extension. The helical focuser was very smooth with no rough grinding feel. When rotating the focuser, it doesn't rotate whatever is attached at the focuser end. So if you have a camera attached, it will remain in the same orientation instead of twisting any cables that might be attached to it. When I aligned it during the day, I found the images came through very clearly. The six thumb screws took some getting used to for alignment, but I was able to align it with precision. I also appreciate how it has nylon tips to prevent scratching the scope's nice finish. 
And finally, the price of this guide scope is so reasonable that I think it offers excellent value for my money. A few things worth noting though are that the trade-off for not needing an extension tube to reach focus is that you cannot use a diagonal as an attachment. Also, this didn't come with any manual so you would have to figure it out for yourself on how to assemble and install it. I hope this video helped a little bit in that regard. And lastly, the images through the eyepiece appear upside down but I already expected that. Overall, I think this is a great addition to my astronomy gear. As I mentioned earlier, this guide scope was mass produced under different brands, so you might already have it. And if you do and you've used it for a while, please go to the comments section and share your experiences with this guide scope. And so I'll end it at that. If you like this video, please hit that like button, or better yet, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. As always, clear skies, and thanks for watching.